one time. Let's set it up. I think we're live now. I'm doing good. How are you guys? First timer, first timer. What's going on? Just got done eating dinner, worked today, and went riding, so it's ready to answer some questions. We tried to get the computer to work, but we uh, got the phone going, so we'll get it working. Uh, birthday was good, yeah. Turned the big 26, so yeah, I'm getting old. First bike, uh, PW50. Yep, good old Yamaha. Anybody ever heard of a Dynaport pipe on a Yamaha before they had the all stock class? I'm originally from Western New York, uh, Lockport, New York. That's where I grew up and I was raised until about 13, 14. Then I moved down south. First racing number was 38. Uh, the bike came with 38, my PW did. And my first race, that number was taken. So we added a one and it came off as 381. Wonder how I can go back on these questions here without losing. Oh. Is there a trick to go back to the the questions that were popping up. Maybe not, maybe so. Y'all wanna meet my dog? I have raced Southwick before. Yes, not a big, big fan. Ah, okay, I got it. Figured it out. Uh, daily routine. Uh, it's pretty, pretty basic, you know. I work full time, so I get up around seven or so, and. Uh, I do fiber optic uh, internet cable, so I work about 8 to 5-ish. On days that I ride, I try to get off around 3, get the track uh, at least like an hour or two, come home, usually eat some dinner and a little bit of workout, and that's it. Super cross rounds, I would say I definitely hit in Atlanta since it's only like an hour from us. 
but then um, Daytona would be nice. Maybe Indianapolis. Uh, yeah, Nashville too. Nashville. Driving distance, you know, that's that's a big one. Matt Life, hopefully. Uh, I've had good luck at my life, so maybe I can go back there. I'd like to. Can you give me something so I guess like set this camera up? Ryder, come here. Last time I was at MetLife was 2014, I believe. Title sponsor for 2019? That is a big blank. I don't have one at the moment. Kind of just going privateer style and uh, one race at a time. Mainly, you know, I guess you could say myself, working full-time, paying for everything. There we go. I've been pro for, I think, 2012 till now. So what's that? seven years kind of flew by really seven years <clears throat> race day uh well for me i've been racing arena cross the past past what four years now so it's been pretty laid back really you know you, you don't have to get there super early uh nothing starts until about noon which that, that schedule kind of works my style. And then we got main events at night, so it's it's kind of takes all day, then once it gets rolling at night, they just start winging through the mains, and it's just main one, main two, heat races, qualifying, and it's all over with. Favorite track? That's a, that's a tough one. Outdoor or... or uh, I guess outdoor track. I've always loved Unadilla. I don't know if it's just because I'm a New York boy or what, but I just just like Unadilla. Um, I think that Arena Cross helps the Supercross a little bit. Maybe the tighter tracks. But uh, I've always seemed to do a little better at the tighter stuff. Not exactly sure why. I'm just, uh, I don't get as much bike time as everybody else. So, you know, to go arena cross, I usually always been pretty good at the whoops and figure out the one rhythm, rhythm lane and catapult. So it's, you know, you're not, have a, you don't have a bunch of different obstacles or rhythm lanes that you're trying to put together in one lap. So... Usually I can figure that out and start putting some solid times down and do pretty good. Supercross, you have you have more of the you know different uh, rhythm lanes where you're three you know two three three on tabletop and and it's a lot of stuff that I haven't hit before, so it gets a little a little harder. RC, yeah, he's I think he's good as an announcer. He's smart, educated in motocross, so it's good to have somebody like that. Bike brands, I've been on just about everything, honestly. Even LEM 50. <laughs> I've been on uh, KTM, Husqvarna, Yamaha, Honda, Cowie, Suzuki. Uh, Favorite one's Honda though. I love the Honda.
I mean, yeah, I mean, I think he was good. I'm not really sure why they got rid of him. Uh, I, th I thought he was pretty good. Advice to give to a beginner racer would be just to, to stay calm. You know, you get so, like, your adrenaline going there. They're not used to just containing that and just keeping it down low so you can just be smooth. You know, a lot of times they get too sporadic. I would say, you know, good body position and stay calm and focused. Tracks that I grew up right in New York. Uh, Broom Tioga, Broom Tioga, Area 51, Silver Springs, let's see, we had Freedom, Cohocton, Palmyra, uh, I've been to Moto Masters a couple times. What's up, Jonathan Bryant? Walden? I ne I've never been to Walden MX. Nope. I've heard good things about Pavilion MX too. I've been wanting to get up there and check it out. Look up to when I was little. Uh, of course, Ricky Carmichael, you know, but Dungey's a a good bit older than me, not a lot, but I uh, I look up to his whole riding style, just being smooth and not sporadic, and you know hitting his marks and good body position. Always, always top three. You know, lays back when he needs to, and that's I try to be like that. I guess you know, smaller scale. Do I have any pets? Where's Oak at? Oakley, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh. This is my puggle, Oakley. Say hi, Oak. Oakey. She's a good girl. She's been to a few Supercross rounds in her day. Come here, Ryder. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> oh. yeah. Here's the other fat dog. The other puggle, Ryder. What? You camera shy? Camera shy. <laughs> he just came in from outside too. Now he got me covered in mud. Let's see. <laughs> no, she does not miss a meal. And Supercross, I plan on uh, uh, doing 450. After watching the first two rounds, I was kind of second guessing it a little bit, but it's just, I don't know, I can't afford to build a 250 to be competitive with them guys. 450 is pretty much going to go on a stock bike kind of set up with Supercross suspension, so looking forward to being, I know I can be top 40, but to crack that main, I think it's going to be pretty tough, especially right now. Yeah, we spell this one with a with a Y. Are we good? I lost you guys. Sorry about that. Cool. Let's see. Yeah, definitely a bummer for Malcolm. He was I thought he was on fire. That sucks to break femur. I broke two of them so far, so it's it's not fun. It's not fun. 
Did I play any other sports growing up? I did not. Did not play any other sports. It was pretty much all moto. Can you guys hear me okay? We're good on the sound. You guys can hear me? All right, cool. Worst injury? Uh, I would say my femur probably, I broke left and right femur, but I believe that was like the worst one, like painful wise. But my arm right here, I did that in the arena cross with the light screwing it up. But that, that one was the hardest one to come back from. I got ran over, crashed after the start, got ran over and I had nerve damage and I wasn't able to move my hand. I lost all the muscle in my thumb. I had dropped thumb. So my wife, Jessica, over here, she's a physical therapist and she got it back going, luckily for her. Or else I, I thought I was about done. Favorite Supercross memory of of mine or one that I've watched? I know, right? In-house therapy. It's the best. Favorite memory of mine would be MetLife Stadium winning the LCQ, getting in my first main. I think it was 2014. That was definitely highlight. Best arena cross race, I say for me, was probably this year, round one. Uh, we actually broke down on the way to round one. We had somebody that was actually following us few hours back they helped us get back going uh, I think we got to the to the arena like three hours before practice started I slept for like two hours took a shower and got into qualifying and pulled the start in the heat led laps so that that was just a good memory to be able to push through all that and come out swinging I was pumped Yeah, I've been to the Rettas. Not a fan of the Rettas at all. The last time I went was 2011, I believe. Not a fan of the Rettas. Do you look at the gate or the pin? I look directly straight at the gate. Um, everybody's got different, uh, different ways of doing it, but I've always felt, you know, keep my head straight. Look at the gate. It seems to work pretty good, but I've heard people look at the pin too, so. Yeah, I was teammates with Stink for uh, 2016 Arena Cross on the Rockstar Husky team. We had a good time. It was a fun season. He, he likes to keep it fun for sure. <laughs> Funny his stink dog story, keeping it clean. Man, that's gonna be tough. Ah, let's see. I don't know all the funny ones that come to mind. I'm, I don't know if I can share them. Let's see. What's the funny stink dog story that I could tell? <laughs> Whoa, I'll think on that I'll think on that but if it pops in mind I'll let you guys know <laughs> I just 
the ones that come to mind, I don't think I could share. <laughs> Funny story, I guess, with Stink Dog is uh, with the Rockstar team, me and my mechanic actually traveled with the semi for all the West rounds. And uh, being it with that, Stank and his mechanic Eric borrowed their dad's truck with a U-Haul trailer. And they were like following the rig around, hitting up different tracks and stuff. And, like living out of this little camper that was in the back of a truck. And we were in the rig. We were taking the rig to just random places. We parked at Kyle Regal's house. We got in trouble for that, having the semi in that area. So it was, I guess that was pretty funny, clean, funny. Other hobbies. Um, I like the mountain bike. I got mountain biking last year. Uh, I really enjoy it, it's fun. I got this nice scar, I don't know if you can see it. I like 10 stitches my second week having the mountain bike. Yeah, you were like, I took a digger. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not as good on a mountain bike as a dirt bike. But it's, it's fun, it's a blast. The underdog tat, yeah. I got that while I was recovering from my arm. Um, I still had no feeling at the time. It was like, the guy was like, yeah, can you feel it? I was like, yeah, not, I can't really feel it at all. So it was kind of cool. I figured I could cover. You can barely see the scar now, right there. Got that covered up. Um, yeah, moto option. They're, uh, they're selling some underdog t-shirts. Uh, if you guys are interested in buying one of them. They got hoodies, hats, uh, cool t-shirts. They got other stuff too. You can buy your own custom uh, apparel. So, you know, give them a, give them a, check them out. They're cool. They're from local company back home where I'm from. So, they're good guys. Josh and them. Yeah, Josh is super good. He's always treated me well. It was cool because he was hooked up with us with the the Rockstar Husky team. They uh, they did all our pit shirts and hats and everything with the Rockstar team. So it was kind of cool to see them come aboard as well. I wasn't really shocked when I heard that they were shutting down, but I was, I was kind of just bummed. You know, it was, it was a place where people in like in my shoes, we could go, we could go make a living, uh, not like a fancy living, but we could make a decent amount of money to to live riding a dirt bike, you know, and not spend a crazy amount. I think I paid like four hundred and fifty dollars to sign up for the whole year. Of arena cross you know that would cover like a round and a half of supercross so it was contingency was good in arena cross yeah moto option they're always set up at unadilla yeah exactly it's i think i think supercross is like 275 dollars to sign up 250 maybe may be wrong I usually always have to pay the the late fee because it's like the last week before we decide to go that's why I enjoyed Rena Cross it's pretty cheap same thing and you can make some money just had to be able to hit big whoops I was cool with that <laughs>
Yeah, that'd be awesome if they would support, you know, the with the Moto Hub app and everything, the privateer program. I'm new to all this, so learning at the same time. Uh, I hope they all do support it. It'd be awesome. It's definitely, definitely a cool thing. I dig it. I've never even gone live on on Facebook, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, it's with privateer stuff, it's it's ridiculous trying to do super crosses. Just costs so much money. Yeah, I don't I'm not even sure how some of these kids without support even travel and do it, but hey, they, they make it happen though, so it's awesome. You know, I support them guys too. Four fifty MX rounds. Well, like the past three years, the only one I've done is like Muddy Creek because it's two hours away. And now they drop that, so I lost my arena cross. I lost Muddy Creek National. It's just getting harder for me here. <clears throat> yeah, plans after racing, you know. Uh, I hope to stay with this fiber optic stuff for a little while and as long as I can keep making decent money and and just uh, paying the bills and still be able to ride when I can. Uh, I would love to open up a track, a training facility. I know it's kind of big in this area, a lot of competition, but it would just be fun to be able to teach teach kids what I know, what I've been through, and just pass on the information. I know I would be a whole lot better knowing everything I know now back then, so if I can kind of transfer that down the list, it would, it's got to benefit somebody, you know. Favorite movie, Talladega Nights, for sure. If you ain't first, you're last. Ricky Bobby. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, it's, it's a good toss-up between Talladega Nights and Joe Dirt. I like Joe Dirt. What'd you tell him? Huh? What'd you tell him? Is it a square? Is it a square? Oh, that's a tough one. What do you think? Hmm. If we ever had kids, would they race motocross? You said if we put them on a 50 and they can twist the throttle, they're freaking going racing. Oh. You not remember that? I guess if they got some natural <laughs> <laughs> crepes. Nope, I won't do it. I won't even say thin pancakes. It's just on here. But yeah, if, if my kid, that's a tough, tough thing if I had kids and if if they really wanted to, I guess you're, it's hard to tell them no, but this, this sport's brutal. I don't know if, if I would want to send somebody down this, this path that I've chosen. <laughs> No, I did not play any other sports. So maybe some back backyard football with friends in middle school is about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that. We're on the fence about kids. I do not play fantasy SX. I don't do it. I think uh, I think Jess did one time randomly. She's like, I got my picks for fantasy SX. I'm like, 
Do you do fantasy at SX? Really? I was blown away. I was pumped. Music. Country. I love my country music. Yeah. I love country. But I'll listen to anything. Rap, rock. Taylor Swift, whatever. As long as it's got a good beat, good meaning to something, I'll listen to it. Maybe not on the way to the track. Yeah. I don't know. She might put a couple, couple people above me. It said it said her top picks for fantasy Bitterman. One, Bitterman two, Bitterman three. Yeah. I'm pretty pumped for Brayton. I think he'll help you all yeah. succeed. Yeah, we always root for Justin Brayton. Old guy holding it down. Gives me hope. Arena cross guy. Super cross. He's got the age against him, but still holding strong. Getting better with the years. That's, that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. Yeah, I'm pretty laid back, you know. Like you're saying, go with the flow. That's, you're so tanky. That's, yeah. She says I'm type B. But I just, you know, I'd, I don't know. Race day, it's, it's a little different story. Um, some things that motivate me, which probably shouldn't, is is uh, the money. You know, because a lot of times you go racing, you, you kind of, you got to be able to make something so you can get home. So that kind of motivates you, puts the boot in the ass a little bit. But yeah, I just really competitive, I guess, when I put the helmet on. You know, if, even if I'm not winning, I want to do the best I can do. So I'm pretty competitive, I guess you could say. Reach a goal, too, you know. The metal gates that you start on, like behind the gate, that they just added in Supercross. Yeah, I'd, last year was the first time on them, because I did Tampa and Atlanta last year. Did not, I did, never practiced them before I went there, and I did not care for it. You know, I'm sure if if I had the opportunity to practice on it and get, get the bike set up, the whole shot device set up, I would, you know, be able to be a little better out of the gate. But last year it was just too much traction. I just couldn't keep the front end down. I mean, I didn't loop it out or nothing, but it just wasn't, I couldn't get the, the drive drive out. Yeah. With money on the line, it's definitely, definitely makes it more stressful. You know, it's it's another thing about privateers because, you know, you gotta you kind of weigh your options on you know how much you can possibly bring home and how much you're gonna spend to go. You know, if you gotta buy a new rear tire, you gotta buy clutches, you gotta tear offs, diesel fuel, uh, generator fuel if it's you know, if you're just going in the hole every weekend, it it doesn't that doesn't add to the fun. But if you can at least somewhat break even, that's that's a positive. What fuel? We we run the the VP fuel. You know, other fuel is pretty pretty consistent, and it seems to to do really well. So, I run T four uh, in my practice bike, and it it works pretty good. And it doesn't break the bank, except for when you go racing with a two fifty. That Pro Six that hurts the wallet, big time. 
Um, but it's pretty much rocket fuel. <laughs> My riding strengths, I want to say... I would say tight tracks, of course, but yeah, slick tracks, throttle control. I've always been pretty good with that. I used to race flat track growing up, so pretty good with that. When it gets a little ruddy, I seem to struggle with that because where I'm from right here, it's a lot of red clay and it doesn't rut up a ton. So it. It definitely gets a little tougher when you don't practice on the ruts and you're used to riding red clay. But I'm pretty good when it's slick. Snowcross. Uh, I mean, I've thought about it. I like the sleds. That team that uh, I rode for, the Rockstar Husky, one of the guys, the main sponsors there, put the team together, Andre and... Uh, then the truck driver carry there they uh, were part of the snowcross team up in Canada so that was cool but no I never I've never done it I would like to yeah I'm always down at Muddy Creek you know it's not my favorite track but it always seems to bring a decent amount of guys for local racing Favorite TV show? What? Well, it's not. It's not a uh, on TV. Well, it might be. Is it? We don't have TV, so <laughs> we're privateer style here. We got Netflix. <laughs> but uh, if you, if y'all ever watched The Ranch, The Ranch on Netflix, it's it's got Ashton Kutcher in there and and uh, who's the other guy? But it, it's funny. The old man's a hard ass. It, it's good stuff. I like it. Uh, let's go back to the riding strengths and things you need to work on. I would say um, being a little more active on the bike is something I've been, been working on. Uh, using my legs more, gripping more. After I had my femur breaks, I've always had a little harder time gripping the bike. Uh, not really sure why, like po pointing the toes in, keeping the bike but underneath you. That was a little more, I don't know if they didn't get my rod straight. Not sure what happened, but it was, it was tougher after that. Sorry, I keep blocking the camera over here, but I, I'm scrolling the comments. Yeah, I was definitely looking forward to going to the new arena this weekend. I was, I was pretty pretty bummed when they canceled it. So I was definitely looking forward to it. Morning person or night owl? That's that's a given. Arena cross guy, we race at night. I I I I don't know. I'm not much of a morning person. I guess it goes back to when I grew up with my dad and my uncle Rick. They had a mechanic shop and they had their own race cars and stuff, so they would stay out into the shop till three, four in the morning and I wanted to be like them, so I would stay out there too at a young age and I think that I think that hurt me. I didn't want to miss anything. So now I'm always out in the shop, come home from work, you know, eat your food, do your workout, then I'm out in the shop working on bikes until you can't hold your eyes open no more. Get a couple hours of sleep and back at it. Definitely a night person, I guess. Get more things done. You don't have nobody to, to distract you. Training facilities. I've been to club and I've been to south of the border, not for training, not for just been there to, to ride. 
but I never had the opportunity to go live at one and, you know, take it to that next level. Just funds. Not really sure how how they make that happen. I can barely keep a bike going with the amount of riding I do. Riding every day, wearing tires, rims out, plastics, radiators, fuel, just, man, expensive. Would love to though, I think, I think if I had the right opportunity, I could, I could really do something. Ooh, that's a long story. How me and Jessica met. That's a. <laughs> Actually, we. Me and her brother were born in the same hospital room a few hours apart. And uh, I was good friends with him growing up. And then when we got in middle school, I moved away, come, come back to the different school, and our two schools combined. And next thing you know, Travis was there her brother, and we started hanging out again. And then I noticed he had a little sister that was a year younger than him. So I guess she caught my eye, and then we started dating in middle school, and we've been together for 11 years, 11 years. We got married this August. She had to wait for me. Thank you. Yep. She's a good one. She got lucky with me though. Yeah, we did we did long distance relationship for a while. Like four years. I finally got her to come down here. It's tough for her to be in away from her mom. Yeah, I kind of pretty much go solo as far as like with other riders. I don't really go with anybody really. Um, I have, sometimes my dad goes with me, but uh, my mechanic Brandon, he that uh, traveled the arena cross series with me, he's pretty much like a brother to me. We've known each other since we were six. He lived with me for a while. Um, most of the times he, he goes with me, but yeah. You know, if it ain't my dad, Brandon, or my uncle, or Jess, it's kind of riding solo. Kind of keep to myself, really. Go there and get the job done. <laughs> Probably doesn't help that I'm like OCD. I like everything to be to, to be a certain way, clean. If it gets, you know, mixed up, messes with my head, I guess. Yeah, Oakland Rider. They hit the road with me sometimes and just get my truck, dog hair galore. Capricorn all the way. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yep, I got like three lint, lint rollers on hand when they go come with me. Oakley and Ryder, they are what, six and seven? Mm -hmm. Six and seven. Ryder's six, Oakley's seven. They have the same 
birth date a year apart and different different uh I don't know what you want to call that but different moms <laughs> different mom dogs yeah I guess I don't know I'm sure there's other ways to go about it but I gotta make a list for everything you know that's during the week, I make my list on what's got to be done, what's got to be uh, bought before the weekend, what's got to be cleaned, and I start taking, taking, going down through the list, and you know I do the same thing with with bills. Everything's got to be in order, paid by a certain day. Everything's just I don't know, organized. Less thing, less for me to keep on my mind, the better. I was, I was almost five, I think, when I started riding, like right before I turned five, that summer before I turned five. Yeah, it, it helps for sure. My first race was at Batavia, Batavia, New York, the old track before Area 51 uh, was finished. Well, if I didn't get into motocross racing, I would be probably racing cars. That's what my dad and uncle, that's what they wanted me to do. We had a go-kart built and set up and ready to go racing. And New York, New York changed the law on the age, uh, and come to find out I couldn't race, so I go back to school, and a kid in my class was racing dirt bikes, and then I went back home, let them know, hey, this kid's racing dirt bikes, he's younger than me, we need to get a PW50, and I begged and begged and begged, and finally we got an old Pete out 50 out of the barn from somebody and started riding and haven't looked back since. Yeah, it was mainly uh, my dad, you know, let me, I talked him into getting, getting that PW50 because they wanted me in the go-kart into, you know, and just the micro sprints and then into some late model stuff, but it didn't work out. I caught the, the two wheel fever, so. I'd love to race a dirt, uh, dirt late model though. I used to race micro sprints. Um, it's like a miniature sprint car with a 125cc dirt bike engine on it. Had the wing on top and everything. I raced that up in New York and I was like, uh, 12 or so They thought thought maybe to try a second try to get me back in the car. I Got third in my first feature. It's pretty pumped Yeah, it was it was big back there back then uh, I don't know if they still do it now or I'm not sure what what's going on with that. I know the the 600 cc sprints are they're pretty uh pretty popular around here. Good friend of ours, Kobe Adams, he builds a lot of motors for the the 600s. No, my my dad and uncle they they pretty much gave that all up when uh when I came along. And my dad raced the Bush North series. Uh, my uncle is actually in a wheelchair. He was paralyzed when he was 18. 
uh, got thrown out of the window of a vehicle and he raced dirt modifieds with a, a thumb throttle on the steering wheel and a handbrake. So it was pretty, pretty amazing to see that. You know, was, he pretty much told me if he can do that, you can do anything. There's a lot of motivation there. That's cool. Uh, dirt bike racing is, is expensive, but car racing, that's that's even more expensive. That's why they keep telling me to to get in the car. I'm like, I can't even afford to race dirt bikes, let alone having a $30,000 engine to be competitive in a late model. I'd love to try it, though. Yeah, they're, it's it's a blast to watch them. We usually go up to Charlotte and watch when the, the sprint cars come there. I would get into a dirt late model before I would a sprint car, full-fledged sprint. Them things are just unbelievable how fast they go. And you're steering with just the throttle. It's, it's, it's wild. Like two inches from the wall, wide open. That's some adrenaline though, it's cool. With age comes a cage, so. <laughs> yeah, it's, I believe it's an even trade off. But I think I think it's a little easier to get, get support in car racing though. You know, people, when they sponsor the cars, they're like, wow, there it is. You know, the car's wrapped. They can see you on the track, they can take their family to the local car race that weekend and see the car with their logo on there. You know, dirt bike, yeah, you get like a six inch sticker. Nobody can see that. So it, it kinda, it's kind of a bummer, but. Most of the people I've, that I've had help me in the past, they're not really, they don't really looking for that exposure anyways, they're doing it more or less to help me out, help me reach my goal. So I'm lucky, lucky to have them people step up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. More, uh, Businesses are, are coming in that are so related to motor to motocross, and it's it's good, you know. And then you seen Dean Wilson get that Ignite sponsorship, and then NBC made him uh, cover the logo up. It was it was kind of a bummer, really, because you know he's kind of privateer style on it, even though he's got a legit privateer deal. But still, you know, he's trying every way to make make some money to go racing and here's NBC that's covering the sport and they're making them cover a sponsor up. That's blows my mind. My first sponsor was K100. Uh, no, I take that back. Rudy's Restaurant in New York was my first, first sponsor. I used to have my PW in there with like a bunch of the first place trophies in the window at the at the restaurant in Medina, Medina, New York. Rudy's is still there, I believe, too. Oh yeah, I've listened to Seven Deuce Deuce with My Bike's Too Lit. It was a pretty good song, you know, it's funny to listen to. I definitely ain't producing no song. Maybe maybe a country country twang dirt bike song. Yeah, that was definitely that was cool not to just uh backfire on everybody. 
that was cool that Dean did that. Keep them. You know, people step up to help you and then you just jump ship when something you think's better come along, but it's not permanent, so you know, why would why would he want to jump ship? That was cool to him to to see that lo loyalty. That's cool. Yeah, where where uh where are you from, Benjamin? Kinda close to New York. Yeah, did you guys see the the thing Ignite posted uh, about NBC Sports? Yeah, that's uh, the fiber optic company I work for is uh, actually we're subcontracted through PRTC, and that's like a like a telephone company in the area. But the guy that actually does my suspension, uh, BDR Racing, Troy Chris, he that's what he does mainly for a living, and he brought me along uh, doing the fiber stuff. I actually started in July this year. Before before that, I was doing LED lights for another company for about three to four years. So it was kind of kind of cool to have my in. You know, this guy. That's what he does. He he's got a kid that uh, rides moto, and and he knows that I'm struggling privateer. So he does my suspension and uh, helped me out with the job at the same time. It, it was good. And it's nice to have somebody like that understand motocross and doesn't give me a hard time when, when I have to take off to go racing. You know, as long as I'm not on no time clock or nothing, you know, I can get there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and put in two, three long, hard days and and get my paycheck instead of having to work the whole week on their schedule. So it's it's... It's nice that I have that flexibility. Westchester, New York. Okay. I'm not exactly familiar with that. Have you heard of that? Mm. Westchester, New York. I've heard of Worcester. Worcester? No, that's math. My sister, she lives in Rochester, New York. So I guess yeah, no, no, no uh, sponsorship from the fiber cable. Okay, well, I'm just lucky enough to have the job. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Yeah, Medina's probably. About an hour from you. Maybe a little more. An hour and a half. A little small diner. Downtown Medina. They might even have some trophies still up there. Go back to these comments. Anybody else have any more questions? We can do this all night. Helmet brand. I wear a Fox V3. Yep. 
I don't get free product or nothing like that, but I get a discount. And I don't know, I just really enjoy the way the Fox Instinct boots fit, so the whole boots kind of made me choose with the whole setup. Uh, I know I know a couple other privateers. There's not not many in this area where I'm at. Um, it's kind of the moto scene in this area in the upstate South Carolina is kind of kind of dead. I'm hoping it turns around because we need more places to ride, or else I gotta relocate. <laughs> Yeah, I wear Fox gear too, but my goggles are uh, EKS X brand goggles. I just picked them up for 2019, so you know I was I was pretty pumped. They seem pretty good so far. They got laminated tear offs, tinted lenses, good straps. They're they're pretty legit, and their uh, 2019 goggles look pretty sharp too. The black with the the gray and stuff with the chrome ones, it, it's pretty sharp and affordable too. They're, you know, their top of the line goggles are like 68 bucks. So I think like Oakley's and stuff are just super, super high nowadays. I mean, I get it. They're probably, you know, good, but it's a lot of damn money, money for some goggles. I would say if, if you're just starting and you're in like the South Carolina, I would prefer, hmm, I don't, I don't know, because I know Club MX has added some new tracks, but I know their main track was pretty aggressive back in the day, so I probably wouldn't recommend that one, maybe SLB for like, you know, more of a beginner style track, but yeah, I don't know. They might have different tracks nowadays, so don't hold me to that one. Oh, for you're not you're saying for Supercross. Uh for Supercross I would say SOB. Yeah, Club and Mac's gonna have more of a legit legit setup. Cause you know they got more guys staying there for that. Con contingency deals for gear I don't know so far I have I haven't been lucky to have that so I don't know wish I wish I could figure that one out too <laughs> that new YZ 65 that thing's sweet these kids are lucky these days that thing's ridiculous I had the old KX60. The hell? I need a, a trivia question to give off, give away for this jersey. I need to think of one. About yourself or about racing in general? Probably about myself. Contingency for arena cross was awesome for racing. I'll say that. Hmm. You could say we could pick. Uh, what was my best? 
What was my best finish? Ooh, do people know what your overall finish was without looking it up for Marion Cross this year? It's probably easier. What account? What did you finish overall this year in Marion Cross? What was? Did you finish first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, whatever? Yeah. In what place did you finish overall? It doesn't make you Marion Cross. Can you just pause it? No. Oh. I'm sorry. Okay, for uh, the trivia question for this jersey right here, Ty Lu Honda jersey, we'll sign it and give it away. Question for you guys though: What was my best AX finish from 2018? For the overall of the year? No. Just per in one race. Nope. You gotta say the the place and where it was at though. Like what round? <laughs> That's going for a jersey. I don't even smell. Gee, you should know this. <laughs> What uh, what, what place at Worcester? <laughs> no. Yeah, fourth at Wisconsin overall was was tied with the best at uh, Worcester. So them two are, I guess I guess that one wins. Benjamin. Yep. What was it? Fourth. I had two fourths overall. So Worcester and. Uh, Wisconsin were tied. No, I wish it was Daytona. <laughs> the third podium at Daytona, I would, I would have took that for sure. Yeah, Benjamin, you got yourself a jersey. I'll sign this. You hanging up in the man cave at the shop? Be cool. Oh yeah, that, that catapult at Massachusetts, that thing was gnarly. It was huge. I know on, on uh, press day, there, a couple guys cased it, like pretty bad. One went over the bars and and it, get, it got really, really ruddy too. And finally after the first lights round of practice, we, we talked them into shorting it down because it was, it was ridiculous. Yeah, so Benjamin, if you can, uh, me, uh, email me at kylebitterman581 at gmail, and then uh, send over your address and stuff. We'll get that mailed out to you. Cool deal. Well, if you guys got anything else, yeah, it was, it was definitely big. Well, uh, thank you guys for for having me on here and and um, asking me all these questions. So. I uh, appreciate it. I had fun. Um, hopefully, you guys will get to see me this year in Supercross.
So I look forward to doing some of that. So keep your eyes out for me.